Have you ever tried to push your way through a pole door? I tell you what, it does not feel good to walk up to a door and push on it, expecting it to give, only to have your face smash up against it because it didn't go anywhere when you pushed it. Not that I know this from experience, of course. But when it comes to our networking, we have this concept of pushing and pulling from an information perspective. Most of our routing protocols prefer to push information everywhere just in case we need that information out there. But Lisp operates a little differently. It prefers to pull that information down on an as-needed basis. In this video, we're going to take a look at the control plane mechanism of Lisp and see how it differs in that push-pull mechanism, but then also look at the data plane as well and see how exactly it tunnels packets. Let's dive in. We need to break Lisp down between its control plane and data plane of operation. First of all, let's take a look at that control plane. As mentioned in the intro, the control plane is going to leverage a pull operation rather than a push operation. Well, what I mean by that is, let's say we're running a traditional EIGRP or OSPF network, and we've got all of these routers communicating with one another, and we all know that what they're doing is sharing routes with each other. We need to know where every single route is in the network just in case we get a packet that is destined for one of those routes. But that means that we have to have the entire routing table on every single router. And yes, we can get creative with things like aggregation of routes, which we talked about in the last video, and we can use the ultimate aggregated route in some cases, the default route. But regardless of how we do it, we need to have a plan in place for whatever packet lands on our router. Well, Lisp is going to do this a little bit different. Lisp is going to have a mapping server that tracks all of the information. So everything we're talking about up here where we have all the information on every single router in our network, that information is going to be migrated onto this mapping server. And now rather than carrying all of the information, we're going to carry nothing until we need it. In other words, once a packet arrives on this router and is destined for a particular subnet, at that point, the router is going to go out and request that information. That information is called a routing locator or an RLOC. The routing locator is essentially a loopback address of the device that I want to send this traffic towards. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to package this up and send it out in a tunnel interface that is going to eventually land on that routing locator. Now, speaking of tunnels, we also need to discuss the Lisp data plane. As mentioned a few times, the data plane is going to be a tunneling mechanism. However, this is going to differ from what we're accustomed to in an SDA fabric. Because in an SDA fabric, we use VXLAN for our tunneling mechanism, but not so in a traditional Lisp environment. Lisp itself has a tunneling mechanism that is used in the internet service provider space. Now, as with most tunneling mechanisms, we're going to take that original packet and encapsulate that inside of another header. This original packet has the original IP source and destination addresses, and we're going to encapsulate that in a new IP header that has the new source and destination addresses. The new destination address is going to be that routing locator. And as we know, as we hand those packets off within the network, this is the only IP address that we're concerned with reaching. And this is why our routing table sizes can be much smaller within a Lisp domain. Now, inside of this, we're going to have a UDP header as well, because we're running Lisp on UDP. And then we have the Lisp header itself. Now, a few things to know about this particular tunneling mechanism. First of all, we support both IP version 4 and IP version 6 using the same mechanism. Second of all, the UDP port is chosen to be 4341 as the destination. The source port is going to vary depending on how we want to load balance this within the network. Now inside this Lisp header, we have this concept of an instance ID. This instance ID has the same role as that virtual network identifier that we're used to seeing inside of a VXLAN tunnel. And its role, just like with the VNID, is to differentiate between different virtual routing and forwarding instances, or VRFs. So when we have traffic that shows up on a particular router, that router is going to reach out to the mapping server and obtain the RLOC information. At this point, this is what we call the ingress tunneling router, or ITR. That's a Lisp term that we use to describe the router that's on the inbound side of this traffic, and we're going to encapsulate that into our packet using the methodology described down here and send it to the destination RLOC. In this case, we call this the egress tunneling router, or ETR. Now, in the software-defined access world, both of these would be referred to as fabric edge nodes. However, in Lisp, if we just want to speak generically, we'll call them an XTR meaning it could be an ingress or egress tunneling router, either way. Now, one last thing to note here is that, as we mentioned, we're not using VXLAN as we do in an SDA world. And so when we're using Lisp, we are using this tunneling mechanism right here. But as we may notice, we're not including the Ethernet header in this tunneling mechanism. That is something that's exclusive to VXLAN, and therefore Lisp is layer 3 only. We cannot use Lisp to transfer layer 2 information between two different XTRs. This means that we cannot share a subnet among multiple locations like we can in software-defined access. 
So it's interesting to know that Lisp does have a data plane because in the SDA world, we don't use Lisp at the data plane. We use VXLAN. And so it's good to know that that option is there. And indeed, that's what we're going to use in traditional Lisp environments. Here's what we need to take away from this conversation. First of all, from a control plane perspective, Lisp does use this pulling mechanism as opposed to push. The IGRP we want to push those routes everywhere so we can handle whatever situation comes up. But in Lisp, we know that when a packet arrives, we can reach out to that authoritative source, that map server, and pull that information down. And that's how the control plane is built in Lisp. Now, from a data plane perspective, we are IP base or layer three only, but we can support IPv4 and IPv6. And remember, we use UDP port 4341 as our destination. We scramble or choose different source ports to help load balance in the fabric. Last but not least, from a data plane perspective as well, tunnels are built between ITRs and ETRs. Again, we call those fabric edge nodes in the SDA world and the LISP world, we call them ITRs and ETRs, or again, if we want to speak generically about them, we can call them XTRs. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.